Welcome to the Coppreneur Path Podcast. Welcome to the show that is all about the path from cop to coppreneur. I'm your host, Adam Wills. With this podcast, I am going to help equip you for your own post law enforcement entrepreneurial journey with lessons learned from my experience growing a successful post Leo business. You'll also get to hear from fellow coppreneurs and experts in business and marketing whose advice will give you an edge against the competition. You are in the right place. So let's get after it. Welcome back for another episode of the Coppreneur Path podcast, sponsored by Elio to CEO.com. I'm here today with Chad Bruckner. Chad, welcome to the show. How are you? Hey, Adam. How you doing, brother? Good to be on. Yeah, man. It's good to have you on, too. I've been following your stuff on LinkedIn, seeing what you're doing. You're you're very outspoken and outspoken with a purpose. And uh, there's no better way to be outspoken, right, than to have a purpose behind what you want to share with the world. And so... Uh, I've become awfully intrigued by the things that you're sharing, really mainly surrounding mental health and and wellness uh, and and a bit of uh, introspectiveness, I guess we'll say. I don't know if introspectiveness is actually a word, but it is now because I just made it up and used it. So um, go with it, brother. Yeah. So no, it's good to have you on, man. I've been wanting to connect for a while. So uh, why don't you start by letting everybody know, like, what do you do? What's your background? Give us just a little bit of an indication. What? Who's Chad Bruckner? Yeah, no, I appreciate you having me on. Um, we get back to the the introspection, the new word you made. Uh, uh, deep thinking <laughs> is like what identifies me. Everybody knows me. I'm a deep thinker. I sit here and I analyze things from every angle. Usually, my involvement could what I could have done better, or you know what I can improve on. So I'm always thinking about. It. I know if I'm built like that, I know there's other people like that. So um, yeah. I'm from the Philly area. Um, Born and raised in that in the Northeast and uh, come from a good family, loving family. And, and at 17, I'm the oldest of three. I decided my, my father was in the military, decided to go in the Army. So I went in at 17, just graduated high school. It was initially going to be a four year enlistment. Uh, I went in 98.02. So 9 11 happened during that initial enlistment, which changed everything. I ended up doing eight years and uh, going to Iraq, serving a combat tour there in the infantry. And, and he got out at 25 years old with no college degree, no career no aspiration, didn't know what I wanted to do. So it was quickly during that process. My mom, let me backtrack. My mom for years was suggesting I'd be going to law enforcement and be a police officer. She's like, oh, you're so, you work hard, you're empathetic, you know, you'd be great. That's what that the community needs. And my I- interaction with law enforcement and it's no fault to anybody was just, it was very minimal. So I was never really in trouble. And my only interactions with law enforcement were getting pulled over for speeding a couple of times when I got my license. So right. because my perspective was so narrow, I thought law enforcement, Pulling people over, citing for speeding didn't seem like something that was interesting to me. When I went to Iraq as an infantryman and we did a lot of urban inv- urban operations. So being in the community, being in the town, cultivating informants for intelligence, trying to find out where the terrorists are, I realized it was very power law enforcement, you know, building good relationships and getting out into the towns and the community and trying to make a difference. So when I came back and got out at 25, my perspective now changed. I thought, okay, maybe I don't want to write speeding tickets, but I know there's a lot more to law enforcement than that. So I started to go down that road. So it was, it was pretty quick. I got in the police academy, paid myself through, actually the VA paid for that and uh, started at, applying, get, finally got hired by a police department in, in suburban Philadelphia. Uh, did that for 13 years, got out this year in 2021 and bought a private investigation firm, an existing firm and have aspirations to really grow. And it's happening right now, actually. We're, we're working on some some large contracts, federal contracts, and uh, really just want to make an impact and, and build uh, something that is special and, and use my experience in law enforcement. I was a detective for seven and a half years, was undercover, uh, led some operations, and, and really want to use that experience now in, in the private sector to make an impact for corporations, municipalities. So uh, most importantly, I'm a father. I have three kids, uh, 12, nine, and five. I have a wife who's a school teacher. We've been married 14 years. So that is the essence of my life right there. And that's a lot of decisions I made, including leaving law enforcement. Although it was multi-layered, a lot of that went into my family, what was best for, for us right now. Well, first, congratulations on retirement. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. And, uh, you know, I'm glad that you backed up just a little bit there The uh, when you you decided to explain kind of the background behind the idea of of how y- you landed on law enforcement, because the way that you were starting to actually go down that path, I had to chuckle. I was I was thinking you were about to say, 
Uh, you said, I left the army with no aspirations, no degree and no career. So I decided to join law enforcement. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but you backed up before you said that. But, so no, that, that was good. <laughs> yeah. That was kind of true though. I, I, I mm -mm. Yeah. Getting back to my deep thinking, I, I've always been like highly reflective, highly self-aware. It's a strength in a lot of times. It's also sometimes hinders me a little bit from overanalyzing relationships and situations. So, um, but I remember being a, a 14 or 15 year old kid driving around my dad, and, you know, driving in the cars when now that I have kids of my own, I know it's, it's such a special time because there's really nothing else to do but talk. And a lot of good stuff comes out during those car conversations. So I remember driving around my dad asking my dad, like he's married, he has three kids. And I'm thinking, dad, I don't think. And this is tied into self-esteem, which is really something that held me back for a long time. I, I don't think that I'm going to be able to do what you did and get married and have the kids and support a family. Like, I'm not that smart. I'm not that talented. You know how I can't imagine a 14 or 15, whatever it was, that one day I'm going to be a man and have a family. And, and even through my early 20s, getting known I'm going to be getting out of the military. That was something I thought about. Like, uh, I'm going to meet a woman one day. and I'm going to want to settle down. And having kids is always a dream of mine. So how am I going to be able to do that? So there was a little bit of that. I know, I know, I know that job, you know, it's not the military anymore, but it's law enforcement. It's carrying a weapon. I've been doing this since I was 17 years old. I know how to take care of people and serve people and put others first. So like, I know how to do this, maybe not specifically and I have to be trained, but I know that space. So it was comforting to me. It was great benefits. And, and now instead of being in Iraq or Korea or other countries, you know, I'll be in my hometown or my community. So that was, that was definitely intriguing to me. Yeah. Well, so let's fast forward just a little bit. And you know what I want to understand well, first, tell me a little bit more about your your business, your private investigations business. So your focus is specifically on working with corporations, uh, companies. Is that is that correct? Yeah, or? yeah a, a large part of our, our a core part of our, our fun fundamentals and our operations is pre-employment background investigation and screening. So most of our clients are municipalities, private businesses. So uh, that's that's kind of where we, we center our focus. We have a private citizen unit or division, the section that uh, does with infidelity cases, uh, maybe some family law cases. Uh, we do a lot of civil and criminal defense work for attorneys. But the core part is is our private is our pre-employment background screen. And I'm really passionate about that because I think there's a there's a really lacking uh, in, in private industry and in, in municipal government. There is a lack of thoroughly vetting people, making sure the best and most qualified candidates get these positions. So we play an integral role of vetting these candidates, you know, making sure there's no things in their personal background that would contribute to them possibly committing a crime against their employer or, rep or tarnishing the reputation or brand of, of the employer. So, you know, we really love that and we're building that right now and we're working on some cool stuff to really expand not only in Pennsylvania, but outside. So it's exciting. Very cool. Hey, time out real fast. Did you shut off your camera? Because uh, I can't, I can't see you. Uh, yeah. And you, you if you check down, that? there we go. All right. Oh, I apologize. How long is that no. happening? Oh, <laughs> uh, just a few minutes. That's okay. okay. It's all right. Yeah. We'll, we'll we'll dive back in here. So uh, that's pretty awesome that you you know had an opportunity to buy out another firm rather than starting from ground zero, starting from scratch. Do you feel like that has really um, fast forwarded your progress in starting a business and uh, kind of taking this path from cop to copreneur? No doubt. Uh, absolutely. Th going into business, being an entrepreneur, uh, had no background in that whatsoever. So there was a lot of uh, anxiety, a lot of nerves, a lot of things I knew that I had to focus and learn and really study. So yeah, yeah. I've been fortunate to be tied up you know, with the Institute for Veterans and Military Families, a national uh, organization for veterans and veteran entrepreneurs. And they've been amazing support and, and paid for a lot of training for me. And so I really got a foundation of you know what it means to own a business, run a business and how to grow and scale business. So buying an existing business for us was really important because time was an issue and I didn't have the resource, financial resources, frankly, to start from scratch and to slowly let this build. I didn't have that time or nor did I want to do that. And the more I read and studied about, you know, acquisition of businesses, I learned that if you can find something that uh, with tons of potential, uh, there's already a system in place, a niche product or service that is really going to be impactful, beneficial. And I had some passion in it already. I mean, it was just a, the timing worked yeah. out great. And, and like anything in life, a lot of it is opportunity and timing. So it worked out. So how did you even find that opportunity? Was that something that just presented itself to you and landed in your lap? Or did you actually go out seeking uh, an opportunity to buy an existing business? 
Yeah, it was both. It was definitely a lot more luck than uh, than anything. I, I, in 2020, actually, it was December of this year. I'm sorry, back up December of 2019. I decided I was going to leave law enforcement. Um, I, there were some things going on. I just knew that it probably wasn't going to be the same as I wanted it to be, and that was okay. And I would have, you know, I think there's make, a lot make, of people having those thoughts right now. <laughs> oh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, and, and yeah. we can get into this after I answer this question because there, there's a one of the things I really struggle with self esteem and imposter syndrome was. You know, law enforcement, we just assume that this is all we can do. It's all we know. It's all yeah. we can do. Sometimes people put that thought on our heads or they don't encourage us to build upon or go outside our comfort zone because they want to keep us there. And um, so that was something I had to work through. And, and I did. But, um, you know, so when I decided in December 2019, I was going to leave and, and I wanted to go into business. I just really didn't know what to do. Run in, I ran into uh, the former owner of this company we purchased who actually did my background investigation for my police officer position oh, in okay. 2007. So um, I kind of knew who he was. He was a good guy, really good man. Um, and he has this niche where he goes out and he does pre-employment background screens for police officers. This is as a private citizen, a private investigator. He was a retired police chief. And uh, I happened to run into him during this period of time where I made up my mind I was going to leave, but now I didn't know really where I wanted to go. I knew it was going to be business. I just didn't know. I didn't know anything yet. So I run into him and he's telling me he wants to sell. He's, you know, in his early 70s, it's time to retire. He's military career, retired as a police chief. I mean, he's been doing this thing a long time and had the business for 18 years. So we just had these natural, organic conversations. And, and what I learned is he was really selective about who he wanted to sell the business to because it was his legacy. It was something that he created from scratch. And so that was important to him. To, to not only sell, but to find the right buyer. And for us, we were looking to, you know, get involved with somebody that something we're passionate about had great potential. I mean, Bob, the former owner, I mean, he did a great job. He built this company, um, but it was just him. Most of the time it was just him. So just one person is, is going to be unable to grow and scale because you're doing all the work. So it's hard to work on the business when you're working in the business. So, yeah, but sitting with Bob and having all these conversations and learning from him where he wanted to go. And, you know, me, I'm, I just turned 41. So, just time is on my side. I have some more time and this is going to be my full-time commitment. So talking with him, learning from Bob, mixing that with some of my own ideas, I realize this is an opportunity that we couldn't pass up. Yeah. And you know, I think this is a, a really good lesson for, for all the copperneurs out there. And it really doesn't matter what sort of business you're wanting to go into. Uh, if there is an existing opportunity for you to be able to buy into the, the advantage is, is significant. Now, um, you know, I started a business from scratch, sort of. So like I, I almost kind of did this hybrid model, right? So like when I, I started my business, I had a very focused idea of what I wanted to do and how I wanted to do it. But there just happened to be a buddy of mine who was doing web design for years, right? And so um, he was kind of freelancing and and decided that wasn't really something he wanted to do and anymore. His His focus and attention had shifted. And, you know, unfortunately, in the process, those clients that he was managing, their sites started to kind of degrade and, and they weren't being updated. And uh, but they were still, you know, 20, 30 people that he had as clients. And so I ended up buying him out. I bought out all of his clients. And while I didn't buy an existing business because I, I was I just brought them under the, the roof of my business. I bought out this client portfolio. So that's why I say it's kind of like a hybrid model, if you will. But that immediately made me profitable. Like the moment I bought out this client portfolio, I was able to go to these people and say, all right, hey, now I'm managing your website and uh, your website hasn't been updated in how many years. So now let's talk about an update. And so immediately I got to start you know, up, upgrading these people to a new website build. And that made my business profitable from day one. So I would just kind of recommend to everybody out there, if you're thinking about starting a business, look for those opportunities, consider those opportunities. And it doesn't matter whether you want to open a coffee shop or a private investigations business or whatever it may be. Uh, you know, look for those opportunities to buy out a customer portfolio or buy an existing business uh, and take that on because that can really advance your growth in your business rapidly and quickly. So that like Chad said, you can start to focus on the business instead of in it. Because when you start from scratch, 
you have to be in it first. Like there's just no way around it. You have to be in it in order to get to a point where you can be working on it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I feel, and one of the things I learned just, just talking to people, I mean, one thing I, when I was going to decide to do this, I reached out to everybody I knew that was in private, the private sector, you know, whether it's executives in, of a, com- a corporation or company or just be a sale in sales or whatever they've been doing. They, you know, they know a space better than I do, right? which has just been military law enforcement. And all these conversations I had, I really started to understand kind of, I knew where I wanted to go. I didn't know how to do it. And luckily I had so many people that were answering my questions or guiding me. One of the things I learned, which I, I think can be relevant to, to other law enforcement officers thinking about going into business, find a niche service or product and, and specialize and dominate that. Yeah. When I got in a private investigation, wouldn't buy this firm, obviously it's a full service firm and does private citizens, background investigation, surveillance all those things. But I knew that that wasn't where I wanted to focus our bread and butter. We offer those services, but the pre-employment background screening and growing that just section of the business was something that intrigued me. And and we've been successful in doing that, although we have a lot of things we're working on and and learning along the way. So uh, that that's what I I focus on, because I think that's human nature is, well, how can I make this big? How can I make this sustainable? How can I grow this? And sometimes it's not how much you do, it's how great you do one thing. At least for me, that's what I figured out, you know, kind of going down this journey. Yeah. And I think probably the bigger thing there too, I mean, you mentioned niching down or niching, niching, what everybody says it different either way, (laughs) honing in on a specific target audience. Right. Um, That is absolute gold advice. But I think too, what, what you, what led to, or has helped lead to your success in that, in the particular business you bought is that the product the service that that you were that that you were offering that you immediately got to grab onto was productized a productized service not just some ambiguous hey here's a service i offer but being able to productize that and say here's a specific package right and you can yep. you can buy this thing or i'm going to come and do this pre-employment screening and i think that's huge productizing and and you mentioned earlier on as well uh, the processes and in starting from a business with processes, the processes are huge and it doesn't matter whether you're looking to buy a, an existing business or you, in fact, want to grow your business with the focus of trying to sell it someday. Uh, the processes are what what create um, value in that business because those processes are the gold. Absolutely. And, and what I've been learning is if if your process is in your head, it's not really valuable. There's no value to associate. No. With that. Yeah. Because yeah. you are, you are documented what's in, processes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you are what's important where if you document that have policies and procedures, have your systems all down, uh, you know, that's now where you add value. If you want to sell the business, you want to scale the business, bring in other investors. I mean, you have something tangible that you can say, look, this is why it's valuable. And this is how we do it. Yes, sir. Well, hey, with a few minutes we've got left here, I, I do I do want to ask if you're willing to share because you mentioned, what did you say, 12, 13 years you were in law enforcement? Is that right? 13. 13. 13. Mm-hmm. So I was in 15, right? And that was not my plan. My plan was to have a full and long career in law enforcement. And I got to say, I'm glad, I'm glad that fate pulled me <laughs> out of that, right? It was a blessing. Um, you know, I didn't see it at the time, but I do now. And so, you know, Typically, when I meet somebody that's been in for more than 10 years and less than 20, usually it was kind of this unplanned, I, this wasn't what I intended to do. So I'm wondering if you're willing to share with us, why did you decide to leave law enforcement and how has that impacted you now uh, personally and professionally? Yeah. I mean, I was just like you, Adam. I, I you know, I thought I was, I was going to be the chief of police one day. I and mean, that's what I was working for. It was always a goal of mine from day one. Yep. Me too. Uh, that, you know, I went back and got my bachelor's and got my master's. And um, so that that was my career track. And, you know, I got detective in three and a half, four years. And I just wanted to keep advancing and, and lead and serve others honorably, faithfully. So wasn't the plan to leave. Uh, but I think, um, you know, it was multifaceted. It was just being um, first and foremost, I was going through some some mental health challenges at that time that I really needed to focus on for myself. And I think like any other mental health challenge, you know, when you're in the middle of it, it's hard to see one that I'm suffering, uh, going through some bad times Two, what the cause of that is. So, you know, luckily with the support of my wife and close friends and family, I was able to kind of look at things and reevaluate. So that was one issue I was dealing with at that time. 
Two was just the direction of, you know, the agency I was working at. Um, it, it changed, things changed there and there was a direction and, and, um, you, you, everybody has to make a decision or a choice. And, and I don't blame or fault anybody. We are dealt a hand of cards and you can, you know, you look at your, uh, cards and whine and complain about it. You can try to shuffle and deal and, and, and make it work. So, uh, just some things that I said, you know what? I want to try something new. I want to focus on my mental health. Uh, I was working shift work at the time when I decided to leave. So I went back to patrol from detectives. Um, and, and that's just something that wasn't interesting for me. Um, I have so many brothers and sisters that don't mind the shift work, don't mind the 12 hour shifts. And uh, that's great uh, for me being an active and, and hands on father and being away two, three nights every week for night shift or you know, I missed Christmas last year. I worked the last two Thanksgivings, 2019, 2020, uh, just for me and, and my point in life and what I wanted and where I wanted to go. That was not something that that I wanted to do long term. So just kind of putting everything into into a bowl and mixing it up. I, I said, you know what? I've always been an outside the box thinker. I've always been highly positive and never really wanted to accept negative situations and, and just kind of whine about it. I want to twist it and turn it and make it yeah. work better for me and my family. So always had this entrepreneurial spirit of taking something from nothing and growing it or building something special. And it was just, a, everything just hit at this one time. And, and I'm grateful for it. I'm grateful for every negative thing that's ever happened in my life. I have learned something as a result of that, even when I was a child or serving in combat, uh, you know, loss of life or, you know, things not working out of my law enforcement career the way I hope they're planning to, to do. You can learn something from everything. And I did. I learned and I'm still learning and engaging in, in relationships with so many people, successful people in business and people outside of my comfort zone or people that I disagree with. Just all of that soaking that in from everybody, because that is kind of what springboarded me to, you know, this venture and this journey I'm on now. And it's it's been uh, it's been a blast. Well, thanks for sharing that. And and I want to I, I want to applaud you, I guess, first and foremost, for making that decision, because that's a tough decision to make. Um you know, I, I, I know all about that. Uh, it's a tough decision to make, but you know what I always tell everybody is you have kind of two choices. And if, if you find yourself feeling kind of miserable and uh, not happy with your situation in your law enforcement career, are you really benefiting anybody else? You know, when, when you decide to go on duty every day and you have a horrible attitude, either because you're upset with, you know, the agency you work for, or you're just, uh, you don't like the current environment in law enforcement and uh, public opinion, uh, you know, you're going in every day, you're not serving your fellow brothers and sisters uh, on shift, you're not serving your leadership, you're not serving your community well, and you're certainly not serving your family well. Um, and so it's a hard decision to make because we want to like, I think, as cops, we tend to be more resilient than most. And therefore we feel like we ought to just tough it out. We ought to suck it up and we ought to just bite the bullet and work through it and, and get to the end game, the end point of, you know, our 20, 30 year career. But truthfully, if you're miserable, you're not doing anybody any favor. And so I want to, I guess, use your story as a means of encouraging everybody else that's listening right now, that if that's kind of you right now and you're in that spot, you know, I want to encourage you personally. And, and I'm sure Chad does too. I'm happy to talk to you uh, anytime. You know, you can you can hit me up by email or call me or whatever. Um, but you've got to make that decision for yourself too, uh, because chances are, if you're up, you're miserable. You're not you're not really serving people very well. Absolutely. And, and what I what I what I tell cops that are thinking about leaving because the cool thing about leaving is now I've been interacting with first responders and veterans all over the country now since you know I'm not confined to my agency and my sphere of influence has gotten bigger and. Um, you know, what I tell people for anything, like, and this is what I went through. So I'm just telling people what I, what I said in my head was we have an inherent want and desire to be happy. So I asked, are you happy? And if the answer is no, okay, we can complain and point fingers of why you're not happy and blame others. We can do that, but we can also find a structure and system in place through its journaling or mindfulness or gratitude exercises to, to help you ask, to help find what is going to make me happy? What is going to, what is my new purpose? Where do I want to go? Sometimes you don't know and that's okay, but you will find it quicker. I found and, and less harm on your mental and physical health. If you stay rooted in positivity and gratitude and say, you know, I want to be happy. And are you happy? No. Great. Let's figure out a way we can, you can be, be happy and, and feel valued and purposeful in what you do. Yeah. A, a really great exercise that is good for that too. We do a workshop inside the Elio to CEO community called hero on a mission. And the purpose of hero, like what we do first 
And it always like you, the look on everybody's face when we start here at the beginning of the workshop is always kind of comical. We start with uh, creating your obituary. You write your own obituary and everybody's like, why am I writing my own obituary? Well, the purpose of that is, is because it gets you thinking about how do you want to be remembered when in fact you do pass away? What do you want people to say about you? And being like putting that in writing and understanding this is how I want to be remembered allows you to kind of rewind and step back and say, all right, now what do I need to do today? What do I need to do tomorrow in order for this to actually be what people say about me? Right. Mm. And it's a really powerful exercise that workshop here on a mission. We're actually probably due to do that again here pretty soon uh, in the community. But uh, but yeah, uh, think, you know, think about that. Um, Chad, it's been awesome having you. I want to wrap things up. I'd like, I'd like you to take an opportunity, um, you know, share anything that you want to share, give a final word or, uh, whatever that may be, and then let everybody know how they can connect with you. Sure. Yeah. Thanks for having me on Adam. Um, man, there's so, so much to say and, and not enough time yeah. to say it. I, I would say that, uh, for anybody, and I'm going to make it very specific about first responders, law enforcement, thinking about you're unhappy with what you're doing. I mean, the goal for me, honestly, is for everyone to, to find the love and passion. Like I, law enforcement is an amazing profession, very noble, uh, very, it's a very proud profession. So the goal is to stay in that and find a way to do that. If you made the decision you're going to leave, make sure you you think it all the way through. But I think there's a there's a fine line between that and then analysis, a paralysis by analysis where, because that's where the, the, the self-esteem comes in. Well, I can't do it. I don't have the resource. I'm not smart enough. This is stuff I went through. There has to become a point you have to make a decision. Am I going to do this? I've exhausted this and researches exhaustively. I, I've talked to many people. I've done my due diligence. I've looked at the financials. I talked to a lawyer. I spoke to my accountant. Okay, I got all the information. I need. Now it's time to make a decision. And that for me is where I really struggle with. I had a, a panic attack, the first one I ever had, because I realized that like I'm going to do this. I'm going to resign and submit my resignation. And wow, like that feeling, that realness hit me that this is happening. But I'll say it's okay. You'll get through that. It's just the, the initial fear and the shock of doing it. But mm -hmm. you can do it. I know you can. I believe in you. Uh, you just have to have some some confidence and a little gusto to go after it. Awesome. Want to let everybody know how, where can they find you and how can they connect with you? Sure. Yeah. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Twitter at, uh, Chad Bruckner, just my name. Uh, you can DM me there. Uh, uh my email is uh, detective Bruck, D E T B R U C K at gmail.com D E T B R U C K Gmail. And, uh, yeah, I love to interact and engage. I've been doing that. That is probably the coolest thing since I left law enforcement is all the conversations, all the people I met all across the country. Yeah. Uh, just, it's been awesome. So I really enjoy that. Cool. Well, Chad, it's been great having you on the show, but better than I even imagined. And I was really looking forward to this. So uh, great conversation, great advice. Uh, appreciate you coming on. Thank you, brother. Appreciate all you know. Hey, thanks for sticking around till the end of the show. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider leaving a review at leo to ceo.com forward slash podcast dash review or in your preferred podcast listening app. I would love to hear your feedback and it will also help other copreneurs like yourself find the show. Be sure to check out the show notes for this episode. Just go to leo2ceo.com, click on podcast and search this episode number, and you'll find all the links, descriptions, and resources we talked about. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe so you'll be notified when the next episode is live. Thanks again for tuning in, and I'll catch you guys on the next episode.